And my first question really to start with, let's start with David, is I would like a top tip for managing corporate reputation on social media. You've got to gain the reputation to start with. Um, one of the, uh, the things we focus on at, at M3 Media is, is, is telling stories. If you can tell the story, not of what you did for a similar client, but of where you took them, it can be very powerful. And it, 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 it tells that prospect or that potential customer not just what you do, it tells them what you've actually done for someone. It's, it's starting off your reputation, but it's a story that can tell, it, that, that can make it work. Good question. Just remind me what it was. <laughs> um, managing reputation on um, social. Um, there are certain things you can do around uh, reputation if it's been hard earned. There are obviously two sides to a coin on social media. There are extremely positive upsides to what you can be doing on there. But there are often cases where your reputation can be damaged by just a, a, a casual tweet or something. So you have to be on the lookout for um, what is potentially disruptive to your business. So monitoring the social media and seeing what's being said about your business, massively important to your reputation. The first thing is to, is, if, is for organizations to understand we live in a very transparent world now. Everything's there, everything's gonna be talked about. And so for me, it's a lot about education. My top tip would be if, you, if, you, if you're gonna look at how to protect um, brand free social media the start point is making sure that everybody in um, in an organization understands what their responsibilities are when it comes to talking online so that goes balls back to things like policies guidelines and and training so yeah so just to summarize there tell your story get the right message out there and you'll create the right kind of corporate reputation it's about managing perception of your business Definitely look at monitoring what's going on out there. So don't be afraid to address things. It's always worse to see something that's not been handled rather than something that's been handled in quite a professional way. And then looking at getting your employees on board, making sure that you have a social media policy and social media guidelines in place so each of you know what needs to be happening with regards to social media for the business. So thank you very much, guys. That's wonderful. And I wanted to ask today was how you could use automation to actually support your social media activity. Could be measurement, could be strategy could be implementation I, I kind of do a little bit of a shriek at first when people ask me to do if they should be automating things you know it's not kind of a typical advice I would go out and give it's this your first point of interacting on socially should we use automation but you know the tools are getting far more effective than they have, have ever been now and so you know you'll all be a familiar with Hootsuite and using it as a tool for scheduling but actually deep within the recess of, of Hootsuite there's some brilliant tools of, uh, that can help with some of the geo targeting stuff I'm, I'm here today on a skeleton staff um, and I've got a little boy running around and I'm multitasking um, and our, our stuff is automated because it's the one thing that I could do that I could get out of um, some time that I'd have to put at it um, and that's just the way of the world for that session and now I'm like um, am I a redundant person? <laughs> um, but don't get me wrong. I think what you've got to, what you've got to consider is where automation can um, add value in situations where you physically can't have real connection, real conversation, and real interaction with people. The easiest bit to automate is that content push out. The important thing that you should be doing is when somebody then engages with you because of it, is responding as a human being. But as far as simple social media, yes, you can automate a little bit of it, but you really need somebody to engage properly because then you can turn it into customers. So obviously this session is about maximising return on investment, return on spend, however you want to say it, on social media. So maybe we can ask our panel for one top tip really on how you can actually maximise your social media presence 
Obviously, it will depend on what industry you're in, but if you can give us some ideas, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. If you have a business, um, engage everybody in the business. If it's a Facebook page, get them to invite all their friends. You invite all your friends to like your page. Ask all your mates to invite your page. When you're with your mates, say to them, go onto my Facebook page and press invite on every single one of your friends. And just get into the habit of doing that because networks they work by spreading out and spreading out. So we have our first degree network, then our secondary, and we never know who knows somebody else. So where you can find the opportunity to do that, it's gonna cost you nothing, so do it. Get your people to help you. If it's, if it's LinkedIn, get connecting with people, and then start to look at opportunities from there. You don't try to cover all, all bases at once. You focus on what you can do to um, Whatever time commitment you have, do it so that you can um, you can present something in a consistent fashion. Just doing it and leaving it can actually be detrimental in, 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 in the long run. So commit to a few where your market is and, and do it and do it consistently. I would say um, real trumps perfect every time. So don't be afraid to get cracking. Um, you know, you don't have to be Oscar Wilde to be um, put in... Um, content that would be great if you are focus where your market is important um, but have a bit of imagination something that distinguishes you just think of something and sit down and plan and be strategic in it and have something that distinguishes it that makes sure that you know people want to come to you making a cake focus on that little issue marketing has to have a number of ingredients to make it work. We all know the ingredients generally for making a cake. Some of them on their own might taste quite pleasant. There are some ingredients like flour that really aren't gonna do too well on their own. If you're using social media or anything else, you have to have, number one, a real focus of attention on the very specific audience you want to get to or the part of that audience which is going to make you money, which is going to get you easy money because you've only got a certain budget to play with. So you get the focus, but what you have to do is not just use social media, you've got to use one or two other things together. They will all work individually, but nowhere as well as putting all those ingredients together and then baking that cake if you want but making sure the cake is of exactly the right taste and flavor that your target wants to get to so you've got to know your audience but you've got to put your ingredients together to make it work and um, thank you very much guys we have dan we have graham and we have david thank you very much